Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? So it's really nice to have you all with us this morning. My name is Sophie. I'm a member of the worship team here at St. Mark's. Um, and I will be leading the service today. And Lizzie is going to be preaching, so that's something that we can all enjoy. Um, welcome to everybody who's here for the first time, and welcome to some people who are back after a little while. I'm looking at Cousin Reese. They're trying to sneak in. Um, and also, welcome to everybody who's watching online. It is really good to have you with us. So, let's start our worship today by saying, God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. And then I've got a prayer that we're going to say together from this book, which is from the Lindisfarne, from the Iona community, sorry. So let's join together in saying this one. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here to this sacramental moment, for we will surely leave richer than we arrived. And with that inheritance, which grace alone gives, may our lives be a blessing for others, a source of comfort and laughter, of gentleness and generosity. And so the kingdom comes, even through folk like us. Amen. Amen indeed. Let's um, stand, and, if you're able, um, and worship him together.
my favorite line in that song is, break my heart for what breaks yours, everything I am for your kingdom's cause. I think that's the one that we want to take away from today's service. So, um, yeah, let's carry on with our next song, which is King of My Heart. It's time for the children to go out. There definitely are some children running around somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> Polly's going to go and find the children and then take them out. Let's pray for 
the children and the children's group leaders as we do that. Father God, thank you for the blessing of children. Lord, we pray that they may grow in knowledge and in love of you day by day. And we pray that their leaders may be blessed by leading the children's group as well. Amen. All of a sudden it feels quite empty, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's time for our confession. This morning we're thinking about gifts and what gifts we can give to God. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our God for forgiveness. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. We're going to join together today in the collect, which is the prayer that's said across the whole of the country in the, the Church of England. Um, and today I've chosen one which is the slightly more old-fashioned type of language because the words really fit with the service so let's join together and we say almighty god you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts whereby we call you father give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now we've got Reuben will bring us the first reading, um, Tracy the second, and then Lizzie will um, speak to us. Thank you. So the first reading is Ephesians 4, uh, verse 7 to 16. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attains the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the first book of, to, uh, book of Corinthians, chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, 
Jesus as Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. This is the word of the Lord. Father God, have your way with these words. Amen. So today we're thinking about the gifts of the Spirit, and I'll be dotting about between the two readings that we've just heard. I wish I'd had Sophie's prayer, one of the opening prayers, when I started preparing this, because I could just sum it all up in one sentence. And those words were, and so the kingdom comes even through folk like us. We don't all have gifts of healing and of teaching and of prophecy and all those, but we do all have a part to play. Quite often I use gardening analogies in my talks, but today I'm going to think in terms of music. For music to sound good, all the parts of the musical piece need to fit together. All the voices or instruments have their parts, and the parts need to be followed so that the notes happen at the right time, or the music will sound harsh or discordant or just plain awful. I was at a choir rehearsal the other week, and we've got a bit of an absent-minded conductor, and he announced we'd be singing Ave Verum, which is great, except our choir has at least four different Ave Verums that we sing. And as he hadn't stated which composer, all four versions got started at once. (laughs) And it was an awful sound, which luckily only lasted a few moments. Once we were all singing the same piece, It was a joy, each voice part coming in at the right time, each line weaving in and out of the other, creating beautiful harmonies. And I think our Corinthians reading, I think Paul shows us that church is much like a piece of music. It's like a a brilliant music score where when it's played correctly, it's incomparably beautiful. But to play it correctly, all the members need to play their part in harmony. God has a purpose for each of us. He gives us each a part to play in his kingdom symphony. And he equips us with the resources, the spiritual gifts that we need to fulfill that part. So what is a spiritual gift? I would say it's a free and undeserved ability given to us by the Holy Spirit for use in building up God's kingdom. Our spiritual gifts often involve the things we're naturally good at. However, they're not the same as our natural abilities. A spiritual gift is a work of God's spirit that enables us to do his work in a way we couldn't do before. So what does Paul tell us about spiritual gifts? Well, for a start, We aren't all meant to be good at the same thing. He writes, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works in all of them. So there's two words that jump out there, different and same. There are different experiences, gifts, ministries, and areas of service, but God is the one behind them all. And I don't think that that list of gifts that Paul gives in Corinthians was meant to be exhaustive. 
I think he was giving some examples of some of the ways that God might equip a person. This list is not complete, which is why the lists of spiritual gifts in other parts of the Bible are not the same. Paul wanted the Corinthians to understand that no one person was meant to have all the gifts, not even the vicar. God is not looking for a one-man band. He has designed us to need each other and to work together as one harmonious community of faith. And he equips us with gifts that give us the ability to serve the body of Christ with ease, with effectiveness, and with excitement. God has given us different passions and different gifts so that we can do the job that needs to be done. In the same way in a choir, there are different voice types that blend together, or in an orchestra or band, there are a variety of instruments that create the overall sound. The point is that we all have a different job and ministry from the Lord, and he equips us through his spirit to serve him in unique ways. Practically, this means two things. First, it means that not everyone will be passionate about the same things you're passionate about. If God has called you to a certain ministry, it may be hard for you to understand why not everyone else is committed to that as you are. And it might be tempting to think that others are less spiritual than you, and just think how arrogant that sounds, whereas they may simply be called to a different role in church. And that's fantastic news. We have some here who are gifted to work with children. We have others who are gifted to work with the elderly. Others are gifted with technical stuff. By giving us different gifts, God is getting his work done in all the different areas that it needs to be done. I'm getting hot, I'm going to take this off, excuse me. The second thing that serving in unique, unique ways means, thank you Sophie, is that it is wrong to expect one person to be equipped to do everything. One of the problems we can have is a tendency to take someone who is willing and then overload them. There's that joke about why a church is like a helicopter. Stand around too long and you get sucked into the rotors. <laughs> no one, no one is desired or expected to do everything. But we are all called to do that thing God wants us to do and has equipped us to do. Paul makes the point that God designed us to be participants rather than spectators. In verse 7, we're told God has given to each one a manifestation of the Spirit. That's each one, not just the people that sit in the front rows, each one. God has given every believer a way to serve him. He wants us to walk with him and serve him rather than sit and watch. In the body of Christ, everyone has a part to play. Now, Joel has tried several times to explain football to me, how different players have different jobs. And if I remember rightly, there are defenders, attackers, and midfielders, and also the two guys that wear different colored jumpers that stand at either end, who are apparently the goalies. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah, right. Each person on the team has an assigned role to play in order for the team to play well. And in order for the church to play well, we all have to play our part. In the church, God desires that we all serve him in the ways that we have been equipped to serve. We are each significant, each unique. And God has a particular job that he wants each of us to do. The Ephesians reading tells us that gifts are given as Christ apportions. In some translations, it says gifts are given as Christ measures. The Greek word is metron. It's where we get words like metric and metronome, that sense of measurement. It's like God has sized you up and thought about you and pondered you and has equipped you specifically. That's an awesome thought. And I think that's why there's no place for jealousy about gifting. I am never 
going to be as organised as Jane. I'm never going to be able to preach without notes like Bev or clear the kitchen as quickly as Esther can. But I have no need to be jealous because God has given me the gifts that fit me. He tailors the gifts to the person. It's, it's like Jesus has taken you shopping for clothes. He knows what will look good. You may disagree, but it doesn't matter. He's going to give it to you anyway. He's picking out a complete outfit that will suit you alone. And he's giving it to you as a present. Each of us is significant and unique. And God has a particular job that he wants us to do. And he'll give us what we need in order to do that job. We do not choose the gifts we are given. They are decided by God. He gives us the ones he has designed for our use and for the role that he's assigned to us. There's no pecking order. Some people think that the clergy are super spiritual. Others may think that those who are on the PCC are more important than those who do youth work. It might be that people who do children's work are seen as more important than the people who serve the teas and coffees. Anyone who has a sense of superiority because of their gifting has missed the point. Imagine a painting, perhaps that one of the, the new one of King Charles where it's mostly red. The red colour could decide it's more significant because the painting is mostly red. But where would the red be without the shadows made by touches of black or highlights of blue and white? Where would red be without the various shades of red that are created by adding other colours that are hidden but completely necessary? A masterpiece is a blending of colours with each one having an important role. The red paint has no great significance until it is placed on the canvas by the artist. It is the placement that makes the red paint significant. In the same way, any thoughts of superiority over gifting is foolish. We serve the creator. Any glory goes to him. Think about um, an athlete or a footballer, if they score a goal or do something amazing, a lot of them will kind of point to the sky or go across to show that the glory isn't theirs. It comes from God, goes to God. Gifts are not meant to cause division. The whole point is that they build up the body. In verse 7, Paul told the Corinthians that the gifts are given for a common good. And in Ephesians, it says, people are equipped for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. They are not designed to advance our personal agendas. God does not give us gifts to stroke our own egos. He gives us gifts to enrich and build up the church, to encourage and to support one another as we reach out to the world and those around us. Basically, there's a job to be done, and God gives each of the, the equipment he needs us to have in order to get that job done. You may think you only have a little part, but you, and you, and you, you are essential. A friend of mine is a percussionist, and according to the piece of music, may just have to sit very, very quietly for 15 or 20 minutes until the triangle or symbol or whatever is needed. So something like 400 bars rest, you know. She could decide that she's not important and not, not bother to turn up. But actually, the piece wouldn't be complete without her. If we are going to be faithful to each other as a family, faithful to God, faithful to our calling to share God's love in word and action, we all need to play our part, whether big or small. You may not be sure what your part is yet. Ask God. Ask him what it is he wants you to be doing. Believe me, he'll show you. And not only will he show you, through his spirit, he'll ensure you have the right equipment for the job. Result. Someone may say, well, 
all I can do is be friendly to visitors who come into the church. Who knows what seeds you are planting? A smile, a friendly greeting may be the very thing that leads a person to sense the warmth of God's love. Who knows what God is doing through your faithfulness? Someone may say they can't do anything but pray. Well, if all you can do is pray, then all you can do is lift the lost before the Lord. All you can do is pray to God to strengthen the leaders of the church with guidance and wisdom. All you can do is pray a wall of defence around friends, family and church members. This, all you can do, is the very thing that brings the power of God into people's lives. It's no little thing. Maybe all you can do is send people a note or an email of encouragement. Letting people know they are valued, loved and cared for is no little thing. These are all significant works of God. Not everyone is called or equipped to lead a church or run a group or run a service, but we are all equipped to do what God has called us to do in the place he has put us. Discovering your gifts can be a process. Sometimes we need the church to help us see the gifts that we have. Sometimes we know we have a gift, but are afraid it won't be accepted. Whatever your gift is, share it. God has given you gifts and he wants to work through them to build up his people. We all have a part to play in the work of God. Each part is significant and important. We are all part of God's orchestra of grace. We have an amazing message of hope and life to give the world. If everyone plays the part they have been equipped for, then the message of God's love and grace will change lives. Amen. Shall we just pray quickly? Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are a generous God. You have given us Jesus, and you have given us gifts. Please show us the part you want us to play, the part you have equipped us for. You created each of us unique with gifts from you to use for your glory. Father, be about your work in our lives. Amen. Thank you so much, Lizzie. So in a moment, um, we're going to sing. And during that time of singing, I'm going to ask you to um, think about what gifts it is. I'm just going to get my bit of paper now. That maybe you can bring to the church. Not to the church, in fact, to God. The gifts that you've been given don't have to be exercised in this building. They are for use in the whole of your life um, and I don't know what gifts you have but um, God does know actually but it would be take this time to write down some gifts that you think you might have to offer on your bit of paper fold it up and then put it in front of the cross on the altar you might think I don't know what to write down. But I've got this prayer um, that I found. It's a, it feels like it's the prayer of the month. Sometimes you have a prayer that kind of really resonates. Um, and I think it was written um, several decades ago, so I um, claim no credit for it. Yeah, 1950-something, um, by a gentleman called Thomas Merton. And he says this, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. 
that I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. So, yes, whatever you put on your piece of paper, know that our desire to please God does in fact please him. So we're going to come up and start singing, and then uh, please come forward and, and write. Uh, there should be enough pens and paper around for everybody.
standing because we're going to have our affirmation of faith. Let us declare our faith in our good God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Apart from Derek, who's going to come forward and do the prayers. <laughs> so um, if you didn't get a chance to write down what you wanted to and you want to come back and put something on the altar, please feel free to do that at the end of the service. We won't be reading them all. They will be completely confidential. pray. Father, we realise that change starts with ourselves. So this morning we want to come to you with ourselves first and then um, spread out and think more widely about our world. Yes, Lord, change starts with me as I participate. And as we've just laid uh, what we believe you're calling us to, what our gifts may be on the altar, uh, we pray that you would help us to participate, as Lizzie was saying in her talk, to be participants, not to shrink back, but to have the courage and the conviction to use our gifts for the betterment of our friends, our families, for all humanity. Lord, may we rely on you and trust you as we step out to use those gifts. As we're connected, Lord, as we're connected to you, we can do these things that you've called us to. We can have the thrill and the excitement of seeing things made better, of your kingdom coming to earth. Lord, please help us to take our chance of being part of your kingdom coming to earth. Lord, today it's called Father's Day, but Lord, you are the ultimate Father. You are our Father. Whatever's happened in the past with our own experience of fathers, Lord, whether it's been a great one or one where father has been absent or has not been the greatest example lord help us to forgive and to be grateful for our fathers but ultimately lord we know that you've always been there for us you are good as we sang earlier you are good and you are our father we think of saint mark's What's happening here at St. Mark's? And we're so grateful, Lord, for all the, all the stuff that's happening. But Mark and Lorna and their little Esme arriving in several weeks' time now, not very long now, we pray for them. We pray for them that they will know how to um, do what they're called to do here in St. Mark's and that we'll all know how to respond. And Lord, you know that some of us are, are not well, are not able to be here this morning perhaps because of illness. And some of us may have suffered bereavements in recent weeks, months, or even years. Lord, we pray for all who are suffering illnesses and we pray for recovery and for uh, a return to health. We pray for our connect groups and the, and the various other groups that we have, the ministries that we have, the children's work, parent and children groups, the children currently upstairs uh, in their groups. Lord, please give your blessing to everyone involved with all those things. And for our local area, Lord, you know our needs. Uh, we're a big city with so much 
going on, so many challenges and struggles. We pray for wise decisions made in council chambers and we pray for uh, communities to know how to interact with local politicians that things can be made better and all money not wasted on things that really aren't going to make a lot of difference to. If you think of our nation, the UK, with general election coming up, well, we know that the answer to uh, making this world a better place doesn't really lie in politics. But we do know that you bring good people into positions of authority. Um, and that's what we pray for in these elections. No matter what political persuasion people have, Lord, we pray that ultimately you will bring people into power who first and foremost have your kingdom values and who will speak out for them, who want fairness and equality and all the things, Lord, that you want for all of us. And as we think of the conflicts in our world, um, particularly Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, we pray for peace. We pray for sanity to return. We pray for weapons to be laid down, for positive and constructive talks. And Lord, we pray for the repentance all round. And we pray that people will turn to you, especially those with the most power, that people will turn to you and seek your wisdom and your guidance. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's join the prayers together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now it's time to share the peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body we are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please um, share the peace as you wish, whether a wave, a shake, handshake, fist bump, elbow knock, hug. We have some exciting things coming up. Look, there's a poster for Sporty Sunday Woo! on the 30th of um, June. So 30th of June, Sporty Sunday. And there's also a sign-up sheet, which I was supposed to put at the back, but I haven't put it at the back yet. Just imagine the sign-up sheet is already at the back. It'll be there in a minute. Um, and it says, please, can you bring things like, um, can you help? Sporty Sunday, we need help with baking cakes, helping with crafts, helping with sports, serving refreshments. <laughs> and if you can't do any of those, please pray. <laughs> that is also helpful. So Sporty Sunday, 30th of June. 30th of June is also walk or cycle to church. Oh, look, they're on it with the, uh, on it with the pictures. Walk or cycle to church Sunday if you are able to walk or cycle. Um, this is part of our commitment to the environment, to looking after God's world and it is also um, a way of getting there in a way that's hopefully slightly less stressful than if you're driving. Think of it as a pilgrimage, a mini pilgrimage to church. You're walking with Jesus to church in the morning. Then more exciting news, there's going to be a church barbecue lunch after church Sunday the 14th of July. Um, it's free. We would love to have you there. So sign up. Um, there's a church email going out. So if you don't get the church emails, um, then please give your, I'll probably use this and put your email address in the end <laughs> and we will uh, we'll make sure that Jane adds you to the email list and you can come to our church barbecue. So I think that's it. Any other news that I'm supposed to be giving out? Oh yes, there is one other piece of news but it's too sad, I don't want to mention it. <laughs> this is going to be Ollie's last Sunday with us for a long time. 
well, because he's finished his course and he's going off to study more things, but not here. So we're very sad about that. Um, we have been very, very blessed to have Ollie with us. We were praying for a keyboardist for a long time. <laughs> and uh, we've got Ollie and Sen now, so we've got two. Um, we're going to go back down to one. So we're going to miss you, Ollie, a lot. Um, we haven't got organised to get you a present, but that means you have to come back for the um, installation of Mark, and then we might give you something then if you're really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> But um, let's just, can you come to the front so we can pray for you? Go on, please. Anybody want to come and pray, Becca? <laughs> Will you come and pray for Ollie with him? Any, anybody else want to? You're welcome to. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, please bless Ollie in this next stage of his life. Um, may he continue to grow and um, just flourish in his uh, gifting that he has of worship, Lord. Um, I just thank you for that and just pray that he may com continue to know you and that his love for you may grow and strengthen every day. Amen. 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 Lord, thank you so much that uh, we have had the joy of knowing uh, Ollie over the last few years, that uh, you brought him safely through his time at university uh, and brought him to our church where he's been able to uh, use the gifting as we've been hearing about today to, to bless us as a congregation, but also most importantly in bringing those gifts that you've given him back to you. And Lord, we pray that he continues to, to follow you all the days of his life, uh, whether he's here, whether he's anywhere else in the world or the country or in the city. Lord, we just pray that you would be continuing to open the doors that you want him to walk through, uh, that he would look to you um, and continue to worship you um, in every way. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you that Ollie has offered his gifts and talents to you and to us, and that through those he's been blessed. We thank you for that, and we pray your blessing upon him now as he moves on into this next chapter we pray that you would uh, bless him with the right opportunities at the right time and you would oversee this next stage of his life in every way Amen Be blessed <laughs> um, Don't go too far because we're going to sing our next song <laughs> Do stand if you're able and willing and we'd love to Send Ollie out with a really loud rendition of Build Your Kingdom here. <laughs> so remember, this one starts quickly, so be on your toes.
power. May the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. And may the grace, say this together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. <laughs> Please join us for a cup of tea.